Robotica babies, and welcome to a second thrilling, chilling season of Robotica. I'm Ahmed Zappa, and with me is the ever-enchanting Tanya Mim. Thank you very much, Ahmed. We're moments away from beginning our quest to find the ultimate robot competitor, and to do that, we've designed some new challenges and brought back the best of the old. To take it all, they'll have to smash through the gauntlet, a racetrack with attitude. Tame the mighty labyrinth, an obstacle course that eats robots for breakfast, and survive the fight to the finish, a no-holds-barred street fight where anything goes. As always, the bot with the best combination of speed, strength, and strategy will take home the top Robotica honors and a gold medal. Enough talk. Let's get to it. It's time to meet our first competitors. Now entering the arena. The ancient Egyptians proved the pyramid could stand the test of time. But can anyone stand the test of zero? <laughs> This 206-pound robot has four motors that put out more than six horsepower. The pyramid-shaped armor can wedge competitors from any angle, but the baddest feature of all is the armor-chopping mill bit. And Zero was built by Dewan Bingham. Zero's fast and powerful. We fear no one. Dewan has been overcoming obstacles his whole life. I had dyslexia when I was younger, and uh, so I had a kind of a learning disability, but I was able to pick up uh, other things a lot quicker. Though reading sometimes posed a challenge for him, electronics were second nature. Dewan learned in an early age he had a knack for building things. In fact, he built his first robot with lightning speed. I decided to take some of my uh, remote control car parts that I had laying around and build a prototype and took sheet metal from where I was working and cut it down and um, put it together and I built it in three days in, the in my living room. Being quick and resourceful has paid off for Duan. When he was selected for Robotica, he tracked down Chris Hanold, a former contestant who, like Duan, also lives in North Carolina. It's a pretty long job. The two builders hit it off immediately. What Chris did is he helped put into realization what I had in mind. And uh, he also pointed me in all the right directions because I told him what I wanted the robot to do and he told me where to get it. Now with some help from his friends and family, Duan has built Zero, a rolling pyramid of power. I wanted strength power to where when somebody faces it, they go, what is its weakness? So that's, when, that's what I did on my original design. You know, I wanted it to have no weakness. For Zero, power comes in the form of four 1.6 horsepower motors. With over six horsepower combined, Zero is an intimidating presence all by itself. See your kick butt, Lana. But there's something even more menacing under the hood, two industrial strength milling cutters. Everybody uses saw blades, which are essentially ineffective. But a milling cutter is made to cut metal and steel. They get on top of me, the milling cutter will actually gouge into them and throw them. But will Zero make it through the dreaded labyrinth sand trap? Dewan isn't worried. He's got the shore of the entire Atlantic Ocean to practice on. With uh, Zero's power and the weapon and my abilities of driving, I don't think there's any way that we're going to lose. And his opponent, he's 200 plus pounds of metal crunching machinery, and he's just itching for a fight. Keep your guard up. It's Knuckle Buster. <laughs> Knuckle Buster rides high on monster custom 15-inch tires built for ultimate ground clearance and traction. And in a pinch, it can use its punching knuckles to ride itself. And Knuckle Buster is the brainchild of Ron Woodward. High ground clearance, tremendous traction. Knuckle Buster is going to bust him. Ron is an automotive optics engineer and father of three teenagers. He's a real family man. In fact, he's got a whole other family as well. A slightly less human family. Meet Robbie, Bongo, Bulbot, and Rover. His latest addition, Knuckle Buster, is a dream come true. And he's as proud as any new dad can be. It's kind of like you get these cold shivers running up and down your back, you know, and says, look at that dude go. It's really cool. Knuckle Buster runs on two one and a half horsepower motors and is fitted with a jack shaft, which controls the speed to the custom wheels. I wanted to make sure I had a wheel that had very low uh, force on the sand so I wouldn't sink into it and, and dig a hole and get stuck. To solve that problem, Ron fabricated his own wheels. What I used was a uh, foam rubber core, uh, 
Uh, that provides uh, resilience and allowed me to get about a two uh, PSI ground loading uh, for each of the wheels. Uh, the traction element around there is a uh, part of a conveyor belt, which has tremendous amount of grip with the road. Once the wheels were finished, Ron returned to his computer to design a pair of arms. That would allow the robot to flip itself up or to climb over a large obstacle. The 21-inch arms are powered by windshield wiper motors and can rotate 360 degrees. Ron's relying on them to give him the upper hand in the fight to the finish. Assuming I make it to the final matches, uh, if I can get the other robot up on top of me, I'm going to use those arms to lift him up over the rail and throw him down into the pit of spikes. They look mean, don't they? Well, not as mean as this. You may remember the name, but you won't recognize the face. We call it the gauntlet, and we've genetically engineered this guy to be nastier and uglier than his little brother from last season. And here's how it works. Two bots start here, then drive around the course in opposite directions. Along the way, they must smash through four increasingly difficult walls made of wood, cans, bricks, and finally, cement blocks. Ten points are awarded for each obstacle clear. But it doesn't stop there. <laughs> oh, no. They gotta get past each other, then travel down the opposite side of the track, heading back to the starting line. They score five points for each rubble pile passed. The first bot to make it up the ramp to the center arena gets 10 points. The second gets five. Break all the glass, and the final wall slides down, busts through it, and 15 points are yours. And to break it down from the technical side, Robotica has enlisted the help of robot expert Dan Danknick. Dan is a software designer and a veteran of countless robotic competitions. Sort of a robotic renaissance man, and he's standing on the floor right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Danknick. Thanks, Hamid and Tanya. I'm thrilled to be joining the show, and I'm looking forward to a great season here at Robotica. The gauntlet presents a variety of challenges for the robots. One of the most significant is the wall of bricks. First, they're very light, so when you hit them, they scatter everywhere, creating a field of debris you must contend with. Second, there are a lot of them, and they're just the right size to get caught underneath you and leave you high-centered. If a robot doesn't have a plow of some kind, there's a good chance a brick will get stuck underneath it. Back to you. Thanks, Dan. In this competition, Zero will be tearing up the left side of the track, and Knuckle Buster will be busting up the right. The robots are in position. The gauntlet is ready. Let's go. Robots ready. And here we go. Zero takes off like a shot. He's already around the first run, and bricks go everywhere. Nice. Knuckle Buster has no trouble recycling those cans. But hold on. Knuckle Buster seems to be hung up, and so is Zero. All of a sudden, both bots going nowhere fast. Amit, this is what Knuckle Buster was designed for. His arms and power are lifting him up. Check it out, he's working himself free. He's got excellent control over the geometry of his robot. And Dewan Bingham's doing everything he can to get Zero off those bricks. His low clearance is giving him some trouble there. And here comes Knuckle Buster. He's through the blocks and at the halfway point. Zero now moving. He's at the cement blocks. Nice. This track's only wide enough for one bot to get by, so this should be interesting. Here comes Knuckle Buster. And now we have a confrontation on our hands. Yeah! There's some sweet shots from the Zero Cam. Hmm, good. Zero holds his ground. Knuckle's got to get past Zero to get the really big points, and I don't know how he's going to do it. Whoa, you look at that. He just rolls right over Zero. Nice. Knuckle Buster tearing up the course now. He's plowing through the debris. Oh, he's stuck on a paint can again. He's got plenty of time here, Amit. If he can use his plow in his arms to change his center of mass, he might be able to get traction on one of his wheels and drive off. Zero having more problems getting over the bricks. Knuckle Bus is free now, and he's heading for the ramp. Now, remember, once he's in the center ring, he's got to clear the entire forest of glass before the bonus pain will come down. This is turning into a very lopsided contest. What is up with Zero? Well, I mean, I'll tell you what is not up. It's the body of this robot off of those bricks. Zero went with small wheels for this event. It doesn't look like he has the climbing ability he needs to get out of this mess. Well, it looks like Knuckles' wheels are doing just fine. And what a show he's putting on for the crowd. Ouch! Zero gets showered by some glass from Knuckle Buster. And here comes the bonus pain. Knuckle Buster can taste it. He lines up for the shot. And victory is his! Nice! Look at that, he's saluting the crowd. Ron Woodward must be very, very happy indeed. Here's the score. 
Bureau gets held up with 40 points while Knuckle Buster breaks through with nice. Let's go down to Tanya, who's standing by with the win. What a great round of competition, wouldn't you say? Okay, Knuckle Buster has 90 points. Did you expect to beat Zero in the gauntlet? I, I thought Zero was going to be tough, you know, but uh, you know, the high ground clearance and the Knuckle Busters and the arms to lift me off of stuff all worked out for me. So Knuckle Buster <laughs> busted him. So you hope that your big tires would help you over anything, but you got hung up on the cans. How did you get yourself free? Uh, well, I actually was able to you know, use the plow on the front to kind of lift the front up and pull myself over. So it just kind of creeped over a little bit, uh, like a gorilla walks, and that's kind of where the Knuckle Buster idea came from, how a gorilla walks on his knuckles. <laughs> so how did you maneuver Knuckle Buster over zero? Ah, uh, boy, that was kind of tough. Uh, just got in the position, a little bit of the debris helped me kind of pop up and get over the edge of him. Just kind of wobbled right around the side of him. It, it was pretty exciting and pretty surprising to be able to do that. I think Ken Uncle Buster has all kinds of gadgets going on, and it worked to your advantage. And it worked. It worked. Great stuff. It's fantastic. Woo! Ken Uncle Buster! Yay! Yay! All right. <laughs> Here's one more look from the zero cam. Ken Uncle Buster rolls over zero and on to victory. When we return, two more Robotica heavyweights, the Killer Gorilla and Tetanus, take on the gauntlet. Then later, if the razor sharp spikes don't get you, the hungry rats will. Danger lurks in every corner of the labyrinth. You don't want to miss this. More hot robot action when we return. Robotica. Welcome back to Robotica. We just saw Zero hit the bricks and get hung up. Then Knuckle Buster used his knuckles to free himself and punch to the final bang. But now things are really going to heat up. It's time to meet our next set of robots. Now, entering the arena, Coco wouldn't get far signing with this robot. It's built to take abuse and keep dishing it right back out. It's ooh, ooh, oh, oh, Killer Gorilla. <laughs> This 206-pound beast is powered by four 36-volt motors, and the forklift-style arm is driven by two linear actuators that'll do more than just peel a banana. And this beast has been tamed by Rob Barrow. Gorillas are the strongest primate in the jungle. Our bot, the killer gorilla, is the strongest bot here. Rob met his wife, Pam, while studying primates in graduate school, and they've been monkeying around ever since. If you spend any kind of time uh, watching monkeys, what you see is they're fast, they're strong, and they're aggressive. When it came to naming their robot, the couple was inspired by the king of the primate jungle and dubbed it the Killer Gorilla. The Killer Gorilla is here! They're just giant, powerful primates, and nothing messes with them. So they made the gorilla just as tough. There we go. With the help of their teammate Steve, they designed a special chassis called a space frame. Using short three-quarter inch steel tubes, the frame was precision welded by their other teammate, Nora. It looks like a set of miniature monkey bars, but thanks to strategically placed welds and tubes angled to absorb impact, this chassis can take far more abuse than the average bot. <laughs> but the Killer Gorilla's best feature makes it virtually unstoppable, a radically elaborate redundancy system. We have redundant systems throughout, so we have four motors, one for each wheel. We have two speed controllers, one for the front wheels, one for the back wheels. Oh, it's almost like there's two bots in one. Even if we take really, really heavy damage, we're still going to be able to move. Rob and his friends have poured their hearts and souls into the Killer Gorilla, but that doesn't mean they're going to handle their bot with kid gloves. People get too attached to the robots. They think of them as their children, and that keeps them from using the robot for what they're meant for. You don't want to protect it. You want it to go out and fight as hard as it possibly can, so hard that you're risking the possibility of dying. Rob and Pat know that when it comes to Robotica, it's a jungle out there. But are any of their competitors up to taming this wild beast? Well, we're about to meet one bot that's going to try. Normally, you'd get this by ending up on the wrong side of a rusty nail. But tonight, some bot's going to tangle with those three spikes and wind up with a nasty case of tetanus. <laughs> tetanus weighs in at 208 pounds. A complex drivetrain pushes him along, but the laminated ballistic nylon and lectan armor keeps him safe. And tetanus was created by Kevin Evans. Our robot isn't the prettiest, but it's fast and durable. It's been a little ignored here, but I think it's going to surprise some people. As a kid, Kevin Evans developed an appetite for destruction when he helped his dad fix up cars for their hometown's demolition derby. I had always built the cars myself. 
And when I was old enough, I drove them myself. These days, the Tennessee native's passion has shifted from crashing cars to crashing robots. But he sees a lot of similarities between the two. Probably the biggest one is that it's an event kind of like a Roman gladiatorial thing. It's a fight to the thing. When it came to designing tetanus, Kevin didn't drop sophisticated CADs or blueprints. Like most gearheads, he just went out to his garage and started improvising. This is the ultimate garage project. This was built from scratch in that garage. I didn't hire out any machinist work, no electrical work. I bought the radio and receiver and everything else I've built. Kevin refused to spend a lot of money on something that could wind up in a scrap heap, so unlike many of our high-tech Robotica contestants, he picked up his parts from a decidedly low-tech source, a flea market. You don't have a box of pulleys, do you? Do you have the tubes for these? With his wife and kids in tow, Kevin combed every inch of the flea market looking for junk parts at bargain prices. How much for the valve? Kevin hit the junkyard jackpot when he met a man in a pickup truck selling live goats, as well as this old electric riding mower. To his amazement, Kevin found it had not one, but three motors that he could transplant into his robot. The mower's pair of two and a half horsepower motors drive tetanus, while the third five horsepower motor powers his weapon. Kevin used to win by turning cars into junk, but now he's turning junk into a formidable killing machine. What are his chances of winning Robotica? It's my first time, and, and I can't expect to walk away with everything, but I'm, I'm going to give it a good try. Well, get ready, Kevin, because it's time once again to run the evil gauntlet. Yeah. Remember, the object is to clear as many barriers as possible, scoring points along the way. Get past your opponent, through the rubble, and into the forest of glass. The robot that destroys the final pane of glass ends the game. The killer gorilla will be swinging through the left side of the track, and tetanus will be infecting the right. You know what they say, talk is cheap. It's time to get ready to roll. Robots ready. <laughs> tetanus takes off like a fireball. He has some trouble on the paint cans. Is he stuck? Ooh, not for long. And he's through the bricks. Gorilla's through the cans. What a mess. He's fighting with the debris now. He's got the power and the ground clearance to blast through just about anything out here. And there goes the bricks. Nice. Tetanus sizes up the locks. And he takes him out. Tetanus is through his obstacles. He's at the halfway point. Killer Gorilla is stuck on the concrete blocks. Looking through the tetanus cam there. Sweet. Hello, monkey. Kevin Emmons knows he's got to get past the gorilla, but this monkey's not backing down. We've got a shelling match going on down there, and Tetanus gives the monkey boy the slip. Look at that. Sweet. Both bots are doing their best to get over the other's debris field. Ahmed Killer Gorilla is raising that lifting arm, trying to get the extra clearance he needs to get over those bricks. Now remember, the first bot to enter the center up the ramp gets 10, second gets only five. There goes Tetanus up the ramp. Oh uh, yes, breaking down the forest of glass. Um, it, tetanus keeps hitting those archways around the platform. He's just going way too fast right now. He needs to slow down and regain some control. He's lucky to still be up there. And what is up with the killer gorilla? He's having problems staying on the track right now. Rob Farrow hasn't given up yet. He's leading his gorilla right up the ramp. And he's up. Oh, yeah. A little class of the Titans. Nice. Monkey boy is look at that! He just punches Tetanus right off the side. It's a walk in the park for Killer Gorilla right now. He's got plenty of time on the clock. All he has to do is clear the center area of glass and then pick off the final pain. Here he goes with the last piece of glass. Here comes the bonus pain sliding down. And the gorilla lines up for the shot. Oh! The gorilla pounces off! How'd that happen? He had a clear shot, and he blew it. Oh, can you believe that? The gorilla's on his back. Ahmed, Killer Gorilla's arm was designed for just this sort of emergency. He should be able to flip himself back over, but it doesn't seem to be working. Rob Farrow is one disappointed driver right now. Let me tell you, look at that. 
take another look. Killer Gorilla was not lined up, and with that wide wheelbase, he caught the pillar, climbed right up, and flipped right over. In the end, the Killer Gorilla went belly up, so Tetanus takes the lead. Final score for this round, 70 to 65. All right, let's check in with Tanya, who's down with the winner. Kevin, you're the engineer behind Tetanus. Yes, I am. So, did you think that you were going to win this, the gauntlet? We we weren't certain about that. Uh, it did a lot better than we thought. Uh, very happy with how it did. I noticed, though, that you guys bounced over all the obstacles. Did you know that that was going to happen? Yeah, yeah. We ran it around our little farm quite a bit out there, uh, Potato uh, Hills, and uh, rode, it, rode it off the road into a briar patch once, and that's the way it got out. It bounced out. So, were you afraid when Killer Gorilla knocked you off the side? Yeah, it was it was frightening because there was no way we were going to get traction enough to get back on the platform. We, we knew we weren't going to be breaking any more glass after that. Great job. All right, for tetanus. Woo! So with everyone through the gauntlet, the scores look like this. That's the Knuckle Buster leading 0, 90 to 40, while tetanus leads the Killer Gorilla 70 to 65. When we come back, we're really going to start messing with these guys. The Labyrinth is coming up. It's got a flip ramp that'll send a 200-pound bot flying and steel rollers that'll stop them dead in their tracks. We'll take a nasty little ride when we come back. Robotica. Welcome back to Robotica. We've seen some incredible things so far, and it's only our first competition. Here's how the scores stand. It's Knuckle Buster leading 0, 90 to 40, while Tetanus leads the Killer Gorilla 70 to 65. I'll tell you what, I think it's time to go down to Dan Danknick, who's standing by in the pits. Um, we're back here in the pits with Knuckle Buster. Well, first of all, these amazing wheels. You just drove right over zero, up, coming around second base. Tell us a little bit about these wheels that you used. Well, these wheels are custom fabricated. Uh, we made a sheet of aluminum that we coiled into a big ring. Uh, cut out circles, folded the edges over, it's pop riveted around the edge. Then we bonded uh, on top of this with a uh, urethane adhesive, uh, polyurethane foam. And then this outer tire is actually a piece of conveyor belt material that uh, we wrapped around here and actually you know, stitched it right across this area to form a band. Once we put that on there, then we applied adhesive to that to bond that on. This gives us really you know, low ground contact pressure, which gives us better traction than having a high contact pressure tire. So if you had to go out in industry and buy these wheels, do you have any idea where you could buy anything like this? Nothing like this. So that's why you made yours. That's then. why we made ours. That's absolutely right. As you can see, wheels sometimes make the difference between winning and not winning. Hey, Dan, can you go over to Dewan and see if we can take a look at the wheels on Zero? OK, I'm it. Dewan, tell us a little bit about your choice of wheels here and uh, what was going through your mind when you chose them. Well, in earlier preliminaries, uh, I had the air fill tires on. Um, which gave me a little bit more buoyancy and made me bounce a little bit more. And uh, with the foam-filled tires, I kind of planted and stayed planted on the ground. And that, that didn't do very well for me in this event. So your feeling is you, you would have been able to ride through those bricks and just kept on going? Yeah, more, more or less go over instead of through. And that's what I think I should have done. I see. Well, as you can see, sometimes decisions early on have big consequences later in the game. Back to you, Amit. Thanks, Dan. As you can see, we're just about ready for the Labyrinth, the most death-defying obstacle course in all of competitive robotics. And here's how it works. Our mechanical theseuses will begin the Labyrinth in the center. They race out to shatter six panes of glass, but each pane is guarded by a challenge that's sure to send your department store robot running back to the toy aisle. At the bottom of the point barrel, 15 points apiece will be awarded for navigating past the 253-pound box or the field of stabbing spikes. Next, if you can pass this suspension bridge before it sends you packing or beat this pneumatic flip ramp before you're kissing sky, 20 points belong to you. But life ain't no beach if you get your bot stuck in this sand pit, and stepping on these cargo rollers means you're going nowhere fast. Get to the glass behind these guys, and you get 25 points to take home to mama. Once all six walls are gone, these gates will unlock, and the bot that bashes the glass will pick up another 30 points. And just to make things a little more interesting, they won't be alone in there. They've got some company in the form of our robotic rat. These robotic rodents carry buzz saws powerful enough to cut the wheels right out from under our competitors. And just in case you're worried about getting hit by flying debris, we've got you covered by these safety walls. They're a little added insurance. Dan, you've seen these bots in action. Who do you think has the advantage in this event? Tanya, the area behind the square speed bumps belongs to the Knuckle Buster, and let me tell you why. The speed bumps have a square edge, which is going to pose a real problem for Zero's small wheels. If he does manage to climb up over the leading edge, he's going to fall into the center pocket and have to climb back out. And that's much more difficult than it seems. Back to you. Thank you, Dan. 
And here they are again. Juan Bingham Zero faces Knucklebuster, piloted by Ron Woodward. Which one will tame the labyrinth? It's time to take these two robots to task, Robotica style. Robots ready. And the labyrinth begins. Zero not wasting any time trying to get out of that turd table. He knows he's got some big points that he's got to make up. Knuckle onto the speed bumps. Check out the Knuckle cam, that's sweet. He's across the spikes. Arms up. Right through the glass. Nice. Zero heading right for the sand. Going for the big points here. And nails it. Nice. 25 points. Knuckles moving on to the suspension bridge. Ahmed, he's raising those arms out of the way. That bridge's metal grating is a dangerous place for them to get caught. And he's across. Beautiful. Beautifully done. Well, that glass is harder to break than anyone anticipated. A flexible antenna just isn't going to do it. It looks like he's going to try to raise his arms to get at it. And he almost gets it, but it's, this is going to be difficult. He's going to have a tough time of breaking that glass. Let's see how he does it. Zero having no trouble at all. Moves over the flip ramp, scores 20 more points. Nice. Yeah, the rats are on the loose. Knuckles giving up on his antenna. He'll have to go for the glass he can reach with those arms. Look at the frustration on the face of Ron Woodward. Knuckle Buster through the swinging doors. Looks like the rat's afraid of him. Knuckle flies over the jump rack, meeting up with zero confrontation. Yes! They are just bashing each other. We could be looking at a change in strategy, Ahmed. Zero may be trying to disable Knuckle. Knuckle fighting free! Zero hits Knuckle again! Beautiful! Ahmed, Zero's milling cutters are not strong enough to cut through that armor, but if they hit an electrical wire, it could do the trick. Zero's backing off now. Oh, he's back for more punishment night. Zero on a mission, pounding relentlessly. No more movement from Knuckle. He's just, he's just dead in the water. He's, he's toast. And there goes Zero. He's moving away. Looks like Knuckle Buster's out of the running, and the labyrinth belongs to Dewan Bingham and Zero right now. Zero not letting anything stand in his way. Knocking that rat around. But he can't waste time on the rats right now. He's got to get some more points if he wants to move on to the next round. Knuckle Buster is still not moving. Ron Woodward working those controls, but doing nothing. Knuckle's just sitting there with his fists in the air. Zero's lining up for the cargo rollers. He bashes through. Nicely done. Breaks the glass, 25 more points. He's getting pounded by those wrecking balls, and Zero's out. Looks like he's gonna have to kick around a few rats right now. That suspension bridge is the last open obstacle on it. Now, with Zero's low ground clearance and wide armor, he knows that 20 points aren't worth the risk. And there's the siren. Zero's headed for the gates. He really needs that bonus pain if he's gonna move on. He is so determined. Oh! Oh! In the labyrinth, Juan Bingham is, well, he's crazy. He's doing the crazy robot dance on the ground. Gotta love that guy. And Knuckle Buster's busting days are over. A very happy Juan Bingham. He came from behind. He's going on to the fight to the finish. Here are the scores. Zero with 100 points over Knuckle Buster with 15. Let's go down to Tanya, who's standing by with the winners. Hey everyone, here we have Dwan and his team representing Zero. Now, Dwan, that victory dance that you did, can you show us a little bit of that right now? It was a new one. And then was, it was the right. high baby, and then it was the layback, and then it was the temper tantrum, and then it was the freak out. Okay, you know, it was one of those very things. good. We can tell you're very excited. Okay, so tell me, how did you disable Knuckle? Well, I, I knew that he had chain drive and mm -hmm. I had direct drive, and I knew that if I hit him enough times, it had to either take off um, a chain or maybe disable the, uh, the piece that goes to his uh, chain drive. Right. And um, so I figured if I hit him enough times in the side that I could probably take off one of those. Okay, and what was the dip most difficult part of this round for you? When uh, uh, 
I don't know. Look at Duane, he's so emotional. He's having a hard time remembering. <laughs> no, I, it's like a blur. You know, you see, yeah. you see different things. You see glass. I was glad to get the glass broke this time. I didn't get to break any glass, so I'm happy about it. You didn't, but you got to break a knuckle. You had a brawl there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really awesome. All right, good. Well, you guys did a great job. Thank you. Ready for the next round? Yeah. 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 All right, for zero. Yeah. So after a devastating run of the labyrinth, the scores look like this. Zero beats Kaneko Buster 140 to 105, while Tetanus is leading the Killer Gorilla 70 to 65. But we've still got one more labyrinth to go, and then it's my favorite fight to the finish. Coming up, will the Killer Gorilla make a monkey out of Tetanus? We'll find out when they take a terrifying trip through the labyrinth. Then later, who's going to be living on the edge? We'll know soon enough when Robotica returns. Welcome back to Robotica. We've got one more labyrinth to go. The scores look like this. In the matchup between Tetanus and the Killer Gorilla, Tetanus is up 70 to 65. At the end of tonight's competition, we'll have the first of our six finalists for the Robotica Championship, one from each of our six competitions. And in the championships, it ain't about medals, it's about glory, bragging rights, and the Robotica Trophy. But before they get there, they must survive the fight to the finish. To find out what's happening with the killer gorilla and tetanus, let's go down to our man Dan in the pits. Dan, what's it going to take to win this event? Well, tetanus was actually damaged in the arena, so we're going to come into the pits and get a real damage report. Now, they use Lexan as a cover, Lexan polycarbonate, and it's sheared here on the corner. Tell us a little bit about what happened out there. Well, I don't know whether it was the impact so much as this Lexan is really old and uh, starting to see that that isn't a good thing. Now, a lot of old Lexan becomes embrittled through time by ultraviolet damage. It actually breaks the crystalline structure of the polymer chains inside. And you can see it cracked right here on the corner where the stress was concentrated. Yeah, these are pretty old. I think these were actually Vietnam-era helicopter windows surplus. So what are you going to do? Uh, do you have some spare Lexan? Have you been able to scrounge some up? It's been great. Brian from Team Logicom uh, shops at the same surplus store we did, and he had the exact replacement piece we needed. So. so you're replacing it with a piece equally as old? It's just as old, but that's so, all we can do. OK, well, there you go. That's it for uh, the staff support in the pit. Back to you, Amit. Thanks, Dan. It's catch-up time for the Killer Gorilla, and here's how he's going to do it. It's the labyrinth, and it's six panes of glass guarded by six tough challenges. The harder they are, the more points they're worth. But keep clear of the rats, because the more damage you take here, the less you can take in the fight to the finish. Let's go down Labyrinth's side to Dan Dagnick. What do you think is the only way to win this event, Dan? Tanya, this one's going to come down to ground clearance, and Tetanus doesn't have it. If he goes for the suspension bridge, he can be wide and just caught on the edges. The Killer Gorilla, however, has large wheels that stick out beyond the body of his robot. Ironically, they proved a liability in the gauntlet where those wheels hit the frame of the final glass and bounced them onto his back. The Killer Gorilla should navigate these challenges with no problem. Back to you. Thank you, Dan. Here's the Killer Gorilla pulling up to the starting gate. Let's see if he has what it takes to inoculate himself against the evil sinister tip. That bone-shattering sound means our robots are in position, and it's time to start the labyrinth. Yeah. Robots ready. <laughs> Tetanus goes right after the Gorilla. Oh, he's paying him back for tossing him off the platform in the gauntlet. Um, it, kill a Gorilla can use that lifting arm here if he can get it into position. Kill a Gorilla trying to fight back, but he ends up on two wheels. Look at that! Because those wheels extend beyond the back of his robot and they're still on the ground, he should be able to drive out of this. And it looks like he will. Oh, no! Tetanus isn't letting up. Hill is not going anywhere. This is playing right into Tetanus's hands. He came into this event with the lead. The longer he can stall Killa, the better it is for him. The gorilla is free and on the offensive. And the gorilla pushes Tetanus right into the sand. He's trying to flip him. It's not quite working. Killer Gorilla digging himself deeper into that sand. Pretty tight situation. We've got a stalemate here. Killer Gorilla digs himself any deeper. He may not be able to get out, but he's out. And Tetanus is going for the glass. Oh, he's not breaking it. Oh! Trying to get into position. And he's got 45 points. Nice, nicely done. 
The gorilla going for the ramp. Oh, he shut out. Second time's a charm. He gets across. 20 points for the gorilla. He's turning around. And he stopped by the ramp. Ouch. That ramp's putting a real strain on Killer Gorilla's already damaged lifting arm. He's free now, but he can't seem to get by the ramp. Okay, he makes it across and throws Tennis back into the sand. You gotta love that. And a hungry rat comes to investigate. Both teams fighting, trying to get more points. With two obstacles down, Tetanus is added to his lead from the gauntlet. He's five points ahead of the Killer Gorilla here to the left. Ahmed, take a look at Tetanus's armor. That old piece of Lexan he replaced in the pits with the other piece, equally as old, is already cracked. Killer Gorilla's being hassled by that rat. He's fighting his way over the speed bumps. Looks like he's headed for the suspension bridge. Ahmed, every time those bouncy tires hit those speed bumps, Killer Gorilla changes direction. He's having a hard time lining up this shot. I know, Dan. Looks like he's hesitating a little there. There he goes. 20 points with style. Nicely done, monkey boy. The labyrinth is halfway complete. Three obstacles down, three to go. That rat's trying to get frisky with Tetanus, but Tetanus just shoves him out of the way. Looks like Killer Gorilla's going for the spikes. Ouch! Bad timing. Again, still not right. Rob Farrell being very, very cautious, doesn't want his monkey getting hurt. And he certainly scores the point! Nice! Tetanus is falling behind, but with a box of the rollers left, he's still in it. No problem for him on the way out. Killer Gorilla coming around. And now we've got a fight. Killer Gorilla and Tetanus. Killer's a little out of control. Oh, yes! Now confrontation plays into Killer Gorilla's hand. He's got the lead, and he's trying to stall Tetanus. Killer's got him now. Things don't look good for Tetanus. Oh, and it backfires. Ahmed, if they fix that arm, they should be able to right themselves. And they do it! Amazing! Here's the tetanus cam. He's going for the rollers. Oh, it's so cool looking. But he's still having trouble breaking that glass. That's a shame. Ahmed, just like Knuckle Buster, they have a flexible glass breaker on the front of their robot. They're losing valuable time just positioning themselves. But all that positioning has paid off. He gets 25 more points. Killer Gorilla is going for the box. Oh! Oh, he's jammed it. The box is crooked. Killer Gorilla can't get by. Tetanus is through the rollers, and he's stuck on the rail. Dan, will you look at that? Killer Gorilla actually pulling the box backwards. He probably bent that lifting arm on it. I don't care what he's done. He's still pushing that 253 pounder with ease. Look at that. Oh, knocks the rat out of the way. Lines up for the points, and he takes them. Team Death by Monkeys eagerly looking on. We have got a close match, and there is the siren. The final pain is up for grabs. It's going to come down to this. Tetanus battling with the rat. Now the other rat. And oh, he rolls right on over him. Down to Tetanus and Monkey Boy. Killer Gorilla having some problems getting to the gates. It's going to be a fight to the end. It all comes down to this. Whoever gets the bonus paint is moving on. Both robots jostling for position. Tetanus lined up to take it, and Killer Gorilla swoops in at the last second. The gates are down. Who's going to take this? Killer Gorilla's hung up on the wire. There he goes. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Killer Gorilla takes the final paint and ends the game. A jubilant team death by monkeys. Thereby came through in the end. Way to go. And the Killer Gorilla is moving on to the fight to the finish. Here's the score. It's the Killer Gorilla with 100 points over Tetanus with 50. Let's go down to Tanya with the winner. Here we have Robert Farrow and his team representing Killer Gorilla. What a great round of competition that was. What was your strategy going into this round? Uh, we were only five points behind, so our strategy was let's get the glass as fast as we possibly could. Right. We didn't expect him to come out and hit us right away, right. which that's messed us all up. And your writing mechanism saved you. How did that work? Yeah, so um, we can lift our arm up all the way that's and then touch the wheels on the reverse and we can flip back over. I noticed the rats, too. Sometimes they were an obstacle for you, uh -huh. but there were a couple of times they helped you out, too. Yeah. yeah. When you got sideways up against the rail there, actually, we were over in this corner. One of the rats came and just, just gave us just a little bit of a nudge, and you know, Rob was able to then you know, get the bot squared up and 
pow, right to the glass. Thank you very much. Cool. All righty. All right. Thanks. The first round of competition is history, and we've got a match for the fight to the finish. It's Zero and the Killer Gorilla in an all-out war for robot superiority. Who will win? Stick around and find out. Robot. Coming up, one robot goes to victory lane while the other barrels over the side into a pit of razor-sharp spikes when Robotica returns. Welcome back to Robotica. What a competition it's been. Thrills, chills, spills, we've seen it all. Knuckle Buster took the gauntlet by driving over Zero, but ultimate retribution came when Zero shut him down in the left. A mere five-point difference separated these two bots, but with a little help from his opponent, the Killer Gorilla took the labyrinth from Tetris. Zero's team had to work fast in the pits to fix the various bumps and bruises the robot took in the labyrinth. Pound that out, pound that out, pound that, and uh, straighten this up. I'm good to go. But things weren't so simple for the Killer Gorilla, who was facing his old Achilles heel, the lifting arm. We need to straighten out the lifting arm front got all bent up and we hit him. The bashing in the labyrinth took its toll and he needed some tough body work to get ready for the fight to the finish. Gonna rip in the forearm, we're gonna see how much damage there is underneath. No longer new recruits, these bots have been battle tested and now they're ready to go to war. And the fight to the finish is right around the corner from four mighty robots to the two strongest of the bunch. It's time to separate the cream from the rest of the crop. And to do that, we'll put them in our fight to the finish platform and let them battle it out. Our two robotic gladiators enter the ring and fight for one minute. After that, the guardrails drop away, making this battle a matter of life and death. The last robot standing earns himself a spot in the Robotica Finals at the end of the season. Our robots are in position. There's only one thing left to do. Fight to the finish. As you can see, Juan Bingham and Rob Farrell have taken their places up in the skybox. After months of hard work, it all comes down to this. Here comes Zero. He's got new Lexan wedges. Now, these are going to make it tough for the gorilla to get underneath him. Best of luck. And here comes the killer gorilla right now, rolling to the center of the ring. Both bots came from behind to face each other in this ring tonight. Let's see what happens. Robots ready. <laughs> Lexan wedges aren't keeping the gorilla's lifting arm from getting underneath Zero. Zero spins away from Killa. He moves back in for another attack. Now the gorilla overpowers Zero. He pushes him into the rail. Oh! Uh, those motors just shattering this Lexan wedges nice. Killa gorilla puts Zero hard into the corner. Ouch! Now Zero's got control. The gorilla's on the run. Into the rail, Zero's not letting up. Oh, he just throws him in the corner. Oh, he's gonna go to the side. Oh, he's barely hanging in there. He's trying to lift Killer Gorilla over the rail. He's pulling all of his power into it. He just, he just can't get him over the edge. There is a no pinning rule if Zero holds him there for more than 15 seconds. He's going to be called off. It doesn't look good for Gorilla. Can the Gorilla get out of this alive? There's the call. Zero has to back off 10 feet. These gates are coming down in just seconds. And now the game is on again. Here comes Killa. And there goes the gate. Killa Grill is under zero. He's pushing him around towards the edge. Oh! And there he goes. Killa Grill throws zero off the platform. He's moving on to the finals. A very disappointed Duan Bingham in the foreground as Rob Farrow's team celebrates. Tanya's up in the skybox with Rob right now. He is the proud new owner of a Robotica gold medal. Killer Gorilla is going to be the bot to beat in the Robotica finals. Congratulations, you won! Woo! All right! Yeah, yeah, baby! And there you have it, the winner once again, the Killer Gorilla. One of them. Take another look at this incredible victory. The Killer Gorilla makes a bold statement, and Zero gets the point. We're back with Rob Farrow and Team Death by Monkeys. There was some super bot action in there. You guys are going to the finals. Are you jazzed? Woo! Woo! Yeah. 
Now, now, Rob, you guys were pinned against the glass. Zero had you, and I thought your monkey was gonna fly right on out of there, man. I thought so too. We almost drove ourselves right off the back too. Now, he, he kept bashing into you, and there's a 15-second rule because if the gates would have come down, uh, you guys would have fallen to your death. But you guys were safe. If the rule wasn't there, he's a really strong bot, and we're lucky to win. Well, congratulations, Thanks. you guys. Uh, we'll see you in the finals. You rule. Next time, four more bots will risk battery life, an electronic limb, and their chance at the Robotica Finals. Britannia, Memmy, myself, Dan Danknick. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.